In this video, we're going to discuss the pericardium. Now, the pericardium is a sac that surrounds and protects the heart. And it's important to have a thorough understanding of the structure or the anatomy of the pericardium because in situations such as chest trauma, the pericardium can become compromised and that can compromise the structure of the heart, which then would affect the function of the heart. So let's get into the anatomy of the pericardium. On the right side of the screen here, you can see an image of the thoracic cavity. You have the heart uh, sandwiched in between the two pleural cavities. So the heart lies in the mediastinum, the central compartment of the thoracic cavity. And then on either side of the mediastinum and the heart are the pleural cavities, which house the lungs. Now you can't see it in this image here, but surrounding the heart within the mediastinum is the pericardium the sac that surrounds and protects the heart. Now, I've drawn a diagram on the left side of the screen here to give us a better understanding of, of the anatomy of the pericardium because it can, become, it can become kind of, uh, it's a confusing structure because it's actually made up of two structures with a space in between. Now, if you look at this image here on the left side of the screen of the heart, uh, you don't see the pericardium. So the pericardium would be surrounding the heart in this picture here. Now we've just taken a cross section of the heart and we've labeled it here just to the right of this image here. So let's start on the right side of this labeled, uh, labeled uh, cross section. So this white space here where my cursor is now, this would be the inside of the right ventricle, the lumen of the right ventricle. So it, this space here would be uh, either empty or, or, or filled with blood. Now, the innermost layer of the wall of the heart is made up of, is called the endocardium, which is made up of simple squamous cells. Now these simple squamous cells of the endocardium are continuous with the aorta and then the arteries of the cardiovascular system. Um, it's also, uh, this area here, the endocardium, is also the area where LDL uh, builds up and plaques start to form and cause all sorts of problems. So it's in, in this endocardium that LDL deposits itself and plaque begins to deposit. It's more superficial to the endocardium is the myocardium, which are the muscle cells of the heart. And then superficial to that is the epicardium. Epi means above, so above the wall of the heart, the outermost layer. So just to review, the wall is made up of uh, the wall of the heart is made up of three layers. The innermost layer is the endocardium, which is made up of simple squamous cells. Then we have the myocardium, which are the muscle cells of the heart, and then we have the epicardium. So that is the heart. Then we have a space here. We have a little tiny space that is filled with, uh, not completely filled, but um, has about 10 to 15 milliliters of lubricating fluid uh, f in this space here. And then we have the pericardial sac here where the cursor is. We have the pericardial sac here. So again, we have the, the wall of the heart. So we have the heart here. Then we have a, a little tiny space, and then we have the pericardium here. Now this is where the confusing part comes in. Now the pericardium is not just this outer wall here where the cursor is. The pericardium is also considered the space, and then this layer here surrounding the wall of the heart. Now to make that even more confusing, this layer here is the epicardium. Okay, so let's, let's discuss the pericardium in a little more detail and then this will be uh, a little bit more clear to you. So the pericardium, now we'll start here on the left side of the screen, the pericardium is made up of, of two structures. We have the fibrous pericardium, which is the sac surrounding the heart. Then we have the serous pericardium, which is made up of two layers. The one layer, surrounds the actual heart, and that's called the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. Now the visceral layer is also the epicardium. So the same structure 
has two names. So the epicardium, epi, outside, the epicardium, the outside part of the heart, is also the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. Now, it's easy to remember visceral because visceral it re is referring to organ. So the visceral layer of the serous pericardium surrounds, actually is attached to the heart. Then we have this space called the pericardial space, which is filled with 10 to 15 mils of lubricating fluid. And then we have the parietal layer of the serous pericardium, which is the inner layer of the fibrous pericardium. So again, the serous pericardium has two parts, the visceral layer and the parietal layer. And in between those two layers is the pericardial space. Then we have the fibrous pericardium, which is a tough inelastic sac that surrounds the heart. So this fibrous per pericardium provides the protection for the heart. It's inelastic, it's tough, fibrous connective tissue, so it doesn't allow for much flexibility or movement. But besides the protective tough layer of the pericardium, there also needs to be a liquidy lubricating fluid area to allow some movement for the heart, to give the heart uh, some breathing room to, uh, to, to move around and maneuver without creating any friction on the fibrous layer, because if, if the wall, if the heart was rubbing it up against, so this is the heart, now if this heart was rubbing up against the pericardium, the pericardial sac here, uh, that would create friction on the heart and that would cause all sorts of problems. Now, uh, one way to envision this, this whole structure here is to close your hand into a fist. Now remember, you're, you're a fist a closed fist is often uh, compared to the size of a heart. Now envision blowing up a balloon, tying the balloon, and then sticking your fist, so your fist is, is the heart, now you're sticking your fist inside the balloon, you're pressing it against the balloon, and the balloon, you, you press your fist in, into the balloon far enough so that the balloon is covering your entire hand. Now the part of the balloon, the plastic of the balloon covering your hand, that is the visceral layer of the pericardium here. Then there's a space in between the balloon. That is the pericardial space. Now the part of the balloon not touching your hand, that would be considered the parietal layer of the serous pericardium. Okay, so you have your heart, Pressing into the balloon, the part of the balloon touching your hand is the visceral layer of the serous pericardium. Then you have the pericardial space. And then you have a part of, part of the balloon not touching your, your fist, and that's the serous pericardium. Now, take a plastic bag, a plastic shopping bag, and cover that plastic shopping bag. Put your, the balloon and your fist inside that plastic shopping bag. Now that plastic shopping bag is the fibrous pericardium. So that's one way that you can envision the pericardium with its serous component and its fibrous component. Now one last thing to note here uh, is the pericardial space, which has, uh, it's important to note that it only has a, a very tiny amount of lubricating fluid, about 10 to 15 and maybe even up to 50 milliliters of fluid. Now sometimes uh, in, in, in certain conditions, such as hypothyroidism um, or certain autoimmune diseases such as lupus that cause inflammation of the uh, pericardium, or in chest trauma where fluid might leak into this space, that can become a problem. Now imagine fluid starts accumulating in this pericardial space, uh, and it doesn't take much up to 150 mils of additional fluid in this space can cause a, a, a significant amount of damage. So now imagine fluid begins to fill this space. Um, what's going to happen? Well, the fibrous pericardium is tough, inelastic, it's non-flexible, so it's not going to move. It's not going anywhere. But if we keep filling this space with fluid, 
what's going to happen is the wall of the heart is going to start to lose some of its function um, because pressure is building in this space here. The fibrous pericardium is not letting it expand. So fluid is going to push against the wall of the heart here. So the wall of the heart is going to be compressed inward. Now that's going to affect the, uh, the structure of the heart and consequently it's going to affect the functioning of the heart. So the heart's going to be pumping out less blood to the rest of the body and that could potentially lead to shock.